Okay, so finishing up this last half here, what's an application for centripetal magnetic force? Okay, so centripetal magnetic force. Well, we have the path of an electron. So if we have A part here, and my B part should be over further. B part is over here, not equal to zero meters per second. So if we have a velocity of zero, and we have magnetic fields, so uniform magnetic field, oops, magnetic fields here and here. So the dot, black dashed lines represent magnetic fields. If we're talking about horizontal velocity, okay, so um, for horizontal velocity. Velocity. What happens? So I just talked about on the previous video here, we talked about it entering this uniform field. So just quickly draw it up. So here is what we call vertical velocity. So let's say the, the particle is following this path and gets caught. Okay? I'm talking about the velocity in and out of the board. So if this particle is moving to the right here at some velocity, so let's call it Vy here, I am actually interested in what's going to happen to the X in and out of the board. So if this particle hits the board at 90 degrees, so it comes from your eyes at the screen to 90 degrees, it's going to circle or rotate in a circular motion like this. Okay, so completing the loop, it would go and rotate in circles. And that's if it hit the board at 90 degrees. It would be circling in and out of the board. What happens if we come in and strike the field at an angle? Well, what happens is the particle will end up having what we call a spiral effect. So it's going to kind of walk down or move motion through the uniform field. So it's going to start at one location and it's going to follow a spiral effect. A spiral effect. All right, so as it enters that uniform magnetic field and hits it at an angle, it is going to go in circles like it did up here. All right, so it is going to follow that. However, it's then also going to move down the magnetic field. And when you are going in circles and moving sideways, you create that spiral pattern or corkscrew pattern. So that's what we're looking at in this final stage here in terms of an application because what happens below here, we'll call this the Earth. The Earth has magnetic field lines, so north and south. I'm not going to draw them all in, I'm going to draw one. So here are here is one magnetic field line. So what happens when we have a charged particle come and strike or enter Earth's... So here's our charged particle. What happens when it comes and enters the Earth's magnetic field? Well, it gets caught up in it, and it starts to loop its way or spiral its way down or around Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Similarly, it could have came in this direction and got caught, and it spirals down the magnetic field. So we have that corkscrew effect. What does that create? Well, that creates our northern lights. So below here, I have a link, which I'm posting on this particular note. Okay, if you go to this YouTube site, you get to see the northern lights for those that don't know what it looks like. And those northern lights are when you look in the sky to the north. Uh, typically, it's easier to see up north with that uh, changing colors. That's from charged particles being caught in Earth's magnetic field. All right, so take a minute, pause the video, and run this other video just to see what those what the northern lights do look like and give you an idea of an application of what you're working or what you're doing the calculations for here. It's an example of that uh, centripetal magnetic force. All right. Okay, I'm glad you stopped and watched the video. Moving along then, finishing this up. Uh, electricity and to magnetism and back again. So here we are. So earlier in grade 11, we talked about... Uh, 
Orsted and Faraday and uh, their relationship. So in 1831, Faraday discovered the concept that complemented Orsted's principle. So Faraday's law of electric ma electromagnetic induction states that a magnet field, magnetic field that is moving or changing in intensity in the region around the conductor causes or induces charge to flow. Basically saying magnets can induce electrons to flow. So if we have electric current, so here we are, we have saw this diagram in the grade 11 course. Electric current. If I have electric current, well, I then can create a magnetic field. And that is because of the Oersted principle. So that's where we started when we entered this in the grade 11 material. But then we then discussed or found out that, hey, if I have a magnetic field, Faraday's law says I can create current. And then we talked about the fact that we have power generation allows us to have these coils spinning around, creating magnetic field to electric current, allowing us to have electricity. So taking that one step further then and incorporating something else we talked about, we talked about Lenz's law. So 1835, as we move along the timeline, Henrik Lenz took Faraday one step further. So Lenz's law states that the direction of induced current creates an induced magnetic field that opposes the motion of, induce, of the inducing magnetic field. So what does that mean? Well, if I take my magnet, oops, can't seem to separate it here. Hold on. So if you remember back to the Lenz's Law lesson, I took my magnet, oops, grabbed the wrong one. So here is my magnet. And I passed it in this direction. So we, right? You got to make the sound effects for it to work. That's exactly how that works. So as I pass it across in this direction repeatedly, what happens is that I'm taking a magnetic field. So that's this magnet right here, that magnetic field. And I'm inducing another magnetic field except it is going to oppose the induced magnetic field. So that's why the poles technically line up backwards, maybe to contrary belief. So that north-south, as I go this direction, we end up with the north and south aligned as they are. And from our right-hand rule, we find that current then is induced to flow in this direction. So that's from right-hand rule number two. The thumb is to the north, your fingers curl over top. If I was to re reverse the direction, so I spin the axle the other way, make your noise, Whee! what happens then we start inducing another magnetic field. Again, it opposes the inducing magnetic field, so we get our north and south, and it creates the current to flow the opposite direction. So that's what Lenz then developed from there. So where does that lead us? So this is just review from grade 11. We've talked about it already. Finally, we get to... 1864 and James Maxwell and he tied everything together and put it in a nice package for us. So his four premises of Maxwell's equation. The distribution of electric charges in space is dictated by the electric field the charges produce. Okay. The second one, magnetic and electric field lines are similar except magnetic field lines are continuous. They don't begin or end the way electric field lines do on a charge. And we've seen that. It goes in a large circle around your bar magnet. All right, so if I have a bar magnet, north, south, the, current, or the, uh, the field line will go all the way around and then goes through the magnet, and it's continuous. It keeps going forever, whereas with a charge, it starts and ends with the charge. All right, so it's not continuous. Number three, electric fields are created by changing magnetic fields. So that means that if we have an electric field, uh, we have, sorry, if we have a mag changing magnetic field, we can create an electric field. And the fourth one, magnetic fields can be produced by changing electric fields. So three and four are the counter to each other. So what does that mean then? Summarizing what Maxwell said, he said, if I have an electric field, okay, or can generate an electric field, or have an electric field, then you know what? I can produce 
So produce a magnetic field. And if I have a magnetic field, I can produce an electric field. So they go hand in hand. One produces the other, or can produce the other. So that leads us to our final and very important discovery, especially for the next unit coming up. What we're going to do here is I'm going to draw something in 3D. It probably won't look well, but I'm going to try my best. On the x-axis, I'm going to draw magnetic field strength. On the y-axis, I'm going to have an electric field strength. So on the y-axis, so what I'm going to draw, the easy one first, on the electric field, I'm going to draw a sinusoidal wave. I'm going to draw a changing electric field wave. So I'm going to start it at some height 1, kind of balance it out so I know, so I know it's going to extend from there to there, and we'll spread her out. So I'm going to draw a nice smooth sine curve here. So there we go. So there is a changing electric field. Changing electric field. And what I'm going to do, because this one is vertical, I'm going to draw vertical lines here to help with my drawing that's coming. All right, so it's just a sinusoidal curve. So if what Maxwell said was, if I have a changing magnetic, or sorry, electric field, I can produce a magnetic field. So, similarly, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to draw a 3D picture here. So, if I have maximum strength, okay, right now my electric field strength is at a maximum. So, that means that my magnetic field, corresponding magnetic field, would be at a minimum. When my electric field strength reaches a minimum, my magnetic field strength should be at a max, and vice versa. So it's going to oscillate back and forth with a sine wave, and this curve is going to be going in and out of the page here. So <laughs> now we get to uh, see how well this is. So it's going to kind of look skewed. And this green one is perpendicular to the x-axis. So I'm going to draw my elite green curve, my green lines, matching up there. So there is my attempt at drawing two 3D waves here. So let's go like that. So those two waves are perpendicular to each other. So that is our mag magnetic, changing magnetic field. Okay. So Maxwell said, if I have a changing electric field, it will generate a magnetic field, and vice versa. So he coined this, the electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic wave. So the electromagnetic wave is a combination of electric field. Oops, should be in blue. So electric field and magnetic fields interacting with each other propagating themselves and continuing on. So those two waves, as the electric field changes, the magnetic field will increase and vice versa. They generate each other, creating this particular situation or scenario. So what is the biggest impact? Well, an electromagnetic wave, so an electromagnetic wave, does not need does not need a medium. Huge implications here. So it does not need a medium. Magnetic fields occur in the vacuum. They occur in space. Electric fields do not need an environment to, to, to exist. So this electromagnetic wave, we now have a self-propagating wave of changing magnetic and electric field strengths. And because they're, they're, it allows this wave then to travel the same as it did a sound wave in grade 11 without the use of a medium. So very, very important for us, especially in our upcoming unit. So homework questions. Here they are here. This is what you'll be working on tomorrow. If you have any questions, you know where I'm going to be, and I will see you tomorrow. And uh, good luck in the test.